Well, hello, electronics and retro computing enthusiasts. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to tackle a bit of an age old problem. Um, I build a lot of stuff on breadboards. If you're watching this channel, you probably build a lot of stuff on breadboards too. And if you want to connect a ribbon cable to your breadboard project, well, the problem is these IDC connectors here, they just don't fit in breadboards. The spacing on the pins is all wrong. And there's just really no good way to connect them to a breadboard so that you can plug your ribbon cable in. Because I need a 40 pin IDC adapter for uh, my Jazz 80 computer. I'm going to put a uh, parallel ATA um, port on it so we can work with uh, hard drives and CF cards and whatnot. But the, the whole computer is built on breadboard. I'll put a link to the whole Jazz 80 playlist in the upper right. You can check that out if you like. I've got to the point where I need to have some drives on it. But I would like to continue building on a breadboard, but there's just no good way to do this. Now, I know some companies sell some adapters. I've seen them. I went shopping for them. I found a couple that would work for me, but they were out of stock. And there was no date on when there would be more in stock, if there would ever be more in stock. So I decided to figure out a way to build my own adapters. And I think I've done it. And it works not just for these 40 pin um, IDE adapters over here. Um, you can make them of any size. You know, if you need a 20 pin, you know, 32, 60, 50, whatever, this will work just as well for any of those sizes. And I'll show you how I did it and what materials you need to do it. So let me show you what you need to make this happen. Well, you need your um, IDC connector right there. You need that. You need a little proto board like this one right here and you need some headers and then you can build your own adapter for a breadboard. Just solder your socket in, solder some headers on it, both ends, and you can plug it right into the breadboard. Now um, I found these little proto boards on Amazon. And I'll put links to all this stuff if you want to do this. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can get a better look at this proto board and why this is going to work perfectly for this. All right. Get a good focus on it. The spacing on this is perfect. You've got three sets of solder pads on either side of the central line. They are not connected across the central line, but they are connected to each other on either side of the central line and they have plated through holes. And it's the same pattern on both sides. So if you solder your socket in there and then you solder some headers on it, this should be able to plug right into your proto board there, your breadboard. So that was my idea after finding these and I was very happy once they arrived to see that they, they're gonna work just the way I expected. In fact, I will show you, just like a cooking program, here's one I built earlier. Look at that. Yeah, works good too. Plugs right into the breadboard, just like I planned. Perfect. And we've got three sets of holes on either side of the adapter there that I can plug jumper wires in for the computer. So it works perfectly. So I'll show you how I built this. It's pretty simple. Uh, it took maybe a half hour and you can modify this for any size um, connector you need. Like I said, 20, 30, 32, 40, 50, 60, whatever. So these, these boards right here come are perfect for these 40 pin connectors or anything smaller, but they come in larger sizes, longer sizes, so they'd be good for 50, 60, whatever, if you need them. Uh, so let me show you how I did this. Step one, we're going to center up the connector the way we want it on the board, and we're going to mark off where we want to cut the board, because there's a lot of excess material here on this board. So I'm going to take it out, and we're going to cut off some of this excess material on my bandsaw, and then touch up the edges on my stationary belt sander. Um, I want to cut, not only cut it to length here, but I'm also going to cut off uh, these edges here, which we don't need. So that'll give us more space to plug wires 
into the breadboard. All right. So let's go do that. So I'm doing a little voiceover here because it's very loud out in my workshop. It's very hot and I have a couple of big fans trying to keep it tolerable out there. Plus the machinery itself is going to be quite loud once I start it up. Uh, but we're going to cut off the excess length on my bandsaw here. Uh, I'm going to cut it off on either end to get it the length I want. And that will also get rid of the mounting holes on there, which I don't need. You can see the mounting holes there. So we'll do that first cut it to length and then I'm going to turn it 90 degrees and I'm going to cut off the power buses on each side which I don't need and they just stick out too far covering up a lot of holes in the breadboard so we'll just cut it on all four sides to get it down to the side I, size I need. Now I'm using a bandsaw here I know a lot of people probably don't have bandsaws in their workshop you could probably do this with a Dremel with a uh, uh, skinny cutting wheel in it um, maybe it could be done with a hacksaw, I suppose. Uh, maybe in a vise. Um, possibly with some sort of shears or nippers that could be it could be cut. So there's there's probably lots of different ways to do this. Here I am cutting off the uh, the power bus on one side to free up space for jumpers on the breadboard. But you know what, I have power tools and I'm not afraid to use them. I love to use them. Any excuse to get the power tools out. So I'm using my bandsaw for this. But like I say, there are other ways to do it. And this just takes, you know, with the bandsaw, just, you know, a minute or so and all four cuts are made. And there we go. just about perfect but I can uh, make it a little nicer look and I'm going to clean up the edges a little bit on my stationary belt sander next because they're a little rough and a little uneven so here we are at the stationary belt sander and I'm just going to clean up and straighten all four sides of this because they're a little ragged a little uneven now if you don't have a belt sander you could do this with some sandpaper on a flat surface you could probably do it with an emery board or a file so again you don't need the power equipment but you know i just love to use my power tools whenever i get a chance to do so so again it just takes a few seconds with the belt sander and we wind up with something that looks like a professionally made product in the end. Nice square edges and just the right size. Next it's just a matter of soldering all the pieces together. Um, I like to uh, solder in the IDC connector first. Um, I'll solder you know opposite corners just to hold it in place and then go along and solder them all. Then I will put cut, cut the uh, headers to length and then solder them in from the other side like so and you know that takes about 10 minutes maybe i will spare you that process you don't you know this video doesn't need to be 10 minutes longer and uh, then it's basically done so let's skip ahead to where it's done so as per usual once you've got it all soldered up you've got the uh, connector soldered in you've got the header soldered in Look it all over really well with a loop and make sure you don't have any bad solder connections or any solder bridges. If so, fix those, clean them up, and then you should be done. You should have a connector that will fit in a breadboard and work perfectly just like that, just like mine. So one potential improvement to this would be to use uh, headers that are tall on both sides and so they would stick up on this side so that you could plug on female DuPont jumpers. That's a possibility. I didn't think about that till after I built these. But uh, yeah, having headers sticking up this way too could potentially be useful and give you another place to attach jumper wires to anyway. So that's a possibility, but I think I have achieved the goal I set out to achieve, which was to be able to plug 
a 40 pin ribbon cable into my uh, breadboards for my Jazz Eddy breadboard computer. So I think we're there. So if you found this uh, video at all interesting, educational, informative, inspirational, whatever, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see my future videos. There'll be more videos on electronics and retro computing coming down the pike in the not too distant future. Plus check out my main channel, Omega Geek 64, where there's interesting stuff going on if you're at all interested in um, getting precious metals like gold, silver, palladium, whatnot, out of e-waste. That's what I do over there, among other things. So check that out. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching this one. Bye.